Hello, my name is Nels, and welcome to another episode of Ubrago TV. In this episode, we're going to fight Yellow Screen of Death, which means that we'll be looking at debugging. We're going to do two things in this video. The first thing I'm going to show you is how you can debug a .NET control wrapped in a macro in the exact same way that you're used to using Visual Studio. This includes setting breakpoints, stepping through the code, having local watches, and stuff like that. I'm also going to uh, show you how you can monitor the page rendering process, so you can see every little step uh, that the Umbrago rendering engine uh, does during the process of delivering a web page. So let's get started and get some beautiful yellow screen of devs. So this is my slightly uh, modified uh, boost website. All I've done in uh, this boost website is I've added a little macro, which is called error in me, which simply is a user control where I've made sure that it will throw an error. I place that user control inside the homepage template, which is here. So the moment we are going to refresh this page, we should get a beautiful yellow screen of death. Like this. So normally when you get these screens of death in your development environment, you'll simply set a breakpoint and you'll start stepping through the code so you can see what's going on. But I cannot do that here because I've copied the user control from my uh, development environment, in this case Visual Studio, to my web server, uh, even though it's on the same machine, which means that even if I go debug here, I won't debug my Umbrago website, I'll simply debug my Visual Studio solution. Luckily, there's something we can do about that. Because in Visual Studio, you can attach to a process. That's done in from the debug menu. And you can just click the Attach to Process item. You can also hit uh, Control, Alt, and P, and that will show the same dialog. Once you've done that, make sure that these boxes are ticked. Show processes from all users and show processes in all sessions. Now, if like me, you're on uh, Windows Vista, the process you're going to attach to is called w3wp.exe. That's the web server. If you're on Windows XP, it's going to be called asp.net underscore wp. Simply attach to this process. And when we refresh this page, we're going to go directly into Visual Studio, and we can step through the code just like we used to. So in this case, I can see that my local request value is null, which makes sense because my request string is empty. But down here, I'm going to try to uh, uh, call the toString method on a null object. And of course, I should be getting an error here. So as you can see, it's super simple to uh, use Visual Studio to debug .NET controls. All you need to do is attach to the process, and of course, make sure you copied the files. So that was debugging a control by using Visual Studio. But sometimes Umbrago also throws errors, and it could be nice to see what's going on when that happens. As a sample, let me just try to remove the assemblies from my hello world project where my error in me user control was. So if I delete these, I'll no longer get the yellow screen of death, but I'll get a red box of death instead. So here it is, our beautiful red box of death saying that there was an error creating our user control. Now that's not very useful, but luckily we can enable some more information and get the complete exception. 
That's done by adding a request parameter called UMB debug show trace and set it to true. This only works if Umbrago is in debug mode, which it is by default. In the web config, you can modify the UM Umbrago debug mode and set that to either true or false. And if it's to false, uh, this parameter won't work. So once you get your site live, you should set debug mode to false so people cannot uh, call these uh, extra information. Now, the nice thing about enabling this trace is that you get all information about what's going on inside the rendering engine. So let's scroll down to where Umbrago tries to render our user control. And as you can see, we get the complete exception. Of course, the error was that it could not load the type because we deleted the assembly. You can use this trace for a lot of things. First of all, you can see everything that's going on inside Umbrago just out of curiosity. But you can also use it to identify performance bottlenecks. As you can see on each item in the trace, you get a you have a nice little timestamp. And if your uh, page is running slow, you can identify the different areas of the rendering that takes a lot of time and try to performance enhance them or enable caching.